It's all about the relative size factor. That is, we can go to chapter 7. We have an introduction all about uh, identifying outliers. We have the formula. And indeed, we have a, a table of results on page 184. And we're going to try and do the same with uh, our data. Use Excel, calculate the relative size factor for each vendor using equation 7.1. This is our data. And what I'm going to do is delete everything that I don't need. And that means all that is gone. I'm going to do File, Save As. And we'll save it as Somerville RSF. We'll do a save here. I now am going to, because of the requirement over here, um, do not calculate where the second largest amount is zero or less. I'm going to go and delete all the records that are zero or less. Sort. Largest to smallest. We can open this up a little bit. Column width. And let's take it to 16 for now. I'm going to go to the bottom, home and home, and I'm going to delete everything up to the zeros. Oops, too, too, too keen. Too keen, the zeros have to go. We can't divide by zero. Delete. I'm going to go back home, control home, and I am home without any of the zeros. I'm now going to count how many records I have for each vendor because we need that according to our number of records over there. And uh, here we go. I'm going to do a custom sort so that all the, all the records for each vendor are together. And here we go. I'm going to do right-click sort, custom sort. I'm going to sort by vendor name, and we'll do A to Z. I'm going to add a level, and then sort by amount. Ascending smallest to largest is good. So this is nice. All the amounts for the same vendor are together. And we have the same vendor over there. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of records for each vendor. And uh, let's uh, open this a little bit. Column width, 12. We'll do OK. I'm going to call this num records. And here's the clever little formula. This is obviously, for this vendor, I can put a 1 in here. What I care about is if the vendor is the same vendor, it needs to go two, three, four, five, until the vendor changes. So my formula here is equals if, if A3 equals A2, then what you do is you look up and go C2 plus 1. If they're not the same, start at one again. And there we go. Well, they weren't the same, so it went to one. I'm going to copy this all the way down. Plus sign, a swift left, a double click. And you can see for this vendor, it went one, two. And for this vendor, it went one, two, all the way up to 27. We're good over here. I'm going to do a copy. Paste special values, and now I have the values. Otherwise, uh, if I sort, I lose uh, these nice patterns that I've worked so hard to get. Now, I'm going to go back. I'm going to sort again on custom sort. I'm going to sort on vendor ascending. This is pretty good. But now I'm going to turn the amount around and go from largest to smallest. It means I have the largest amount for the vendor on the first row. And we'll 
will do okay and this is pretty good now we go this vendor i do have the largest and it's selling me i have two records for this vendor i have the largest and i have 27 over here and i'm not even halfway there but i do have the number of records and i do have the max amount the second largest is going to require a bit of uh, work over here here we go number of records i'm going to go back and I'm going to insert a counter again. And the reason I put a counter in now is because I want it. Want, I wanted to tell me when I've reached the second largest record. Let's just uh, make this all bold so that it looks nice, and we'll center it. We should be good here. I'm going to do a counter, and I'm going to count up again so that the second record has got a two next to it and here we go equals okay this is obviously number one if i'm counting up i'm going to go start here equals if a3 equals a2 if the vendor number is the same then go d2 which is the number above it, plus one. Otherwise, start at one again. Here we go. I'm going to take this counter, plus sign, swift left, double click. And now I'm getting more information and things are getting even more exciting. Watch what I have here. For this vendor, I have the largest. I have the number of records. And right here, it's telling me two. And this is the second largest record for this vendor. I'm going to now pull the second largest up to here. I'm going to go from here and pull it up to there. I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to copy it. And let's go second largest. Second large. And now things will get a little tricky. Equals if two things are true if and two things if that equals one comma and that equals two then I'm on the top row for each vendor if those two conditions are true then go and pull B3 up to this row. B3. Otherwise, show me nothing. And nothing is two quotes. And when people speak, open the quote, close the quote. Well, there's nothing in here now. And watch. There is actually a formula here, it just showed nothing. I'm going to copy this down, plus sign, swift left, double click. And what this has done, it has seen, ah, this is one and that is two. So I'm going to go down there and pull the 600 up and it is the second largest. This is one and that is two. I'm going to go down here and pull up the second largest. It looks pretty uh, bland over here. So we will format the cell as currency. I hope we don't get any zeros. We're good. It kept it as blank. Now, I have the largest number of records and the second largest. If I sort this in any way, I'm going to lose these beautiful formulas and everything's in the right order. I need to go here, D and E. Right-click, copy, right-click, paste special values. Now I have the values. I need to go and take this counter. I don't need the counter anymore because I have the number of records, the largest and the second largest. And I'm just going to go delete. So this is good. If I deleted it without um, changing the formulas to values, I go um, start again. I now need 
to go and do a little sort. Um, and the way I'm going to sort is we're going to sort on second largest, largest to smallest, and where I have blanks, I can throw those rows away. So let's go here. I'm going to go data sort. I'm going to sort custom sort and I'm going to delete a level. I'm going to go on second largest and I'm going to sort from how should we sort as Z to A is fine and Z to A is not fine. Control Z custom sort again custom sort and we will delete the level and sort on oh my goodness what's happening here there we go data sort data sort largest to smallest and we lost it again data sort custom sort Second largest, Z to A, A to Z. How's that? Phew, finally. Now I can get rid of everything that is blank because those are neither the first record. Uh, that's, it's either the second record for the vendor or, or at least it's, it's not the first record. All this can go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use F5, go to, and I'm going to go A3437, A3437. And I don't really know where the end of this data set is, but it doesn't really matter. I think I go all the way to H60,000. There we go. And I'm going to do a right click, clear contents, and it's gone. So we're where we need to be. We're going right to the top here. And at this stage, I haven't calculated my relative size factor yet, RSF. And the relative size factor is the largest. And in fact, I know that this is the largest, so I can rename it there. The relative size factor is the largest divided by second largest and it's a bit messy there let me copy this down to the end and let me format this as number two decimal places and we're okay because that's what we like to do over there I just need to go to the bottom and see that things have worked out okay. I do home and home and it went all the way down to the end of the data set. What I really want to go is down to 3437 and so we go F5 go to A3437 is good enough. There we go and it's copied this all the way down to here and there's nothing over there. I'm going to go home again control home. I'm going to sort my relative size factors and it doesn't matter that it still has a formula. I can do sort largest to smallest. And here I have the largest relative size factors at the top. We're going there. And I'm, we look good. I now need to go and see what else is required. Include all the details shown in the results in figure 7.1. I'm good. I have max amount, second largest, number of records, and relative size. I suppose we can go max amount here. We're good. A lot of work for number one. The findings talk about the decimal point error, which vendor is the first decimal point error candidates in your results above. So looking down, I'm just uh, 
which one looks like a decimal point error. I leave that up to you. Large relative size factors are more indicative of error. Use the criteria uh, in your results above. And I think it's these 20 that I'm referring to over there. And now I'm going to do just a little bit of manipulation, even though it's not asked for it. I'm going to go here and I'm going to format this home format as a table. And I like blue table style medium two. And we can do OK. Formatted as a table. And we're good to go. That's a bit neater there. The team found interesting. Give them um, which ones would you audit? I leave that up to you. Number five, we are just using this as an example. I don't suspect anything. Does do the payment date seem reasonable for the type of uh, goods? I leave that up to you. Number six, uh, this one, this question has changed uh, in the past two or three years. So this is what I have now. Uh, you might have something different. What is the vendor's name? Show a screenshot of the reference and review the case submission checklist. And you should be good to go. I'm just going to go back here. What I want to avoid is doing an audit where those cases with the second largest amount is really small. And that gives us a very large ratio. So I'm trying to find one here. See, we have 382 there. We have $5 here. In total, these are very small amounts, and I get a very large relative size factor. So what I could do, I could filter this and say, I really only care about things if the second largest one is a number filter uh, greater than or equal to 10. So we do that, and now we have different results. Uh, with that one $5 taken out of the equation.